Hi everybody, I wanna talk to you. Hi guys, bonjour, hola, my name is Trish. If you're new on this channel, welcome. So guys, in today's lesson, I'll be sharing with you 10 tips that you need to know as a Photoshop user or a Photoshop beginner. So, and if you're also looking to advance in Photoshop, I do have a Skillshare course. I will put a link to that in the description below so you can join me on Skillshare. So without much ado, let's get started. So the first tip that I want to share with you is using the hue and saturation to change any color in your image. So if you take this photo and you go ahead and go to your adjustment levels, add a hue and saturation. Now we want to attempt to change the color of her dress. So you want to click on the hand icon that activates your color picker. Click to select the color of the dress. Now the next thing we're going to do is that we want to click on our hue slider and just change the dress to whatever color we want. But notice that once you do that, the color also is affected on the skin. To get rid of that, you need to play a little bit with your colorization on the bottom. So what we are going to do is that we are going to move our sliders. So we want to take away from the yellow side and we want to go ahead and increase purple side and then we are going to slide all of this back a little and notice what happens and you have to be careful not to go too far off so this is how you can quickly change it and now look at what happens when i change the slide now it's only changing the dress and nothing else so guys that is the first trick now when you do that you notice that sometimes it picks up on the lip because the lip color is the same as the dress color. So to get rid of this, you want to click on your hue, saturation, make sure your foreground is black, pick your brush tool, and you can go ahead and paint to basically hide that portion. Now, if you want to go back and you can do the same thing for obvious areas that you still can get rid of. Now, if you want to go back and change the color again, click on the thumbnail for the hue. Now, if I go and I try to do this, so we don't want to do that. You want to go back and pick your hand uh, tool, which activates your color picker. Now, if you change the slider, you notice that it only changes the dress for you. So that is the first tip. Now, the second tip is what if I want to put an image in the background? A very quick and easy way to do that. So type in your text. Now, let's say we want to put this behind a subject. So what you want to do is that you want to go ahead and select your image. So you want to use the quick select tool. So click on your quick select tool, click on select subject. Now, Photoshop does a very good job to cut out your subject selection for you. Now to add or to put this text on the background, you need to first of all go to your selection and the selection you want to click inverse selection so now the selection that is being made is everything outside of your subject now you want to click on your text layer go ahead and add a layer max by clicking on the layer max thumbnail on the bottom and basically you put your text in the back now if you want to move your text it will become a problem because of the layer max effect that you have added the second option is you can actually cut out your subject completely so that you can have your subject in front of your text so for option two let's say that you have this text you want to put it behind your subject and still be able to move it in different direction. So what we need to do is to make a duplicate of our background. Command J, make a duplicate. You want to click on the top layer and you want to use your quick selection tool. Click on select subject. You have your selection and we can go ahead and just click on 
at layer max. So now we do have the top image without a background. So now I'm going to move my text layer in between the two layers. So now if I move it anyway, I still don't lose any portion of my text. Every piece shows no matter where I move it. So this is the two different options. The third tip that I want to share with you is how to cut out the hair of your subject so that you get a clean look. So with your subject layer, I also brought in a background so that you can see when you cut off the subject, how it looks behind a different background. So with your layer selected, you want to go back to your quick selection tool, click on select subject. Now Photoshop cuts out your subject for you. We still want to go ahead and refine our hair. So you want to go ahead and click on select and max. Now you enter into a whole new window where you get to refine your hair. So what we are going to do is that we want to first of all click on the output setting, the decon, decontamination color. You want to click on that and you want to move it from 100% and you want to set it somewhere to maybe 40% like that. So you get a more realistic look. Now the other thing is that with that, you still have some white areas. So to clean it off, pick up your edge refining brush and just brush around just the hair. And I'm going to do the same thing here as well. And you notice that it takes away the white area in between at the tips of the hair. So you don't have any white tish um, at your tips. So you just go through and just clean it up. Once you're done cleaning it up, you want to make sure that your output says new layer with layer max. So this is a quick and easy way to cut out the hair of your subject. Now, the next tip that I want to share with you is how to convert your colored photo into a black and white. So we are going to go ahead and use calculations and the channels to achieve this look. So you want to click on your layer, go to image and click on calculations. You want to make sure that your blend mode says multiply and your channel is on red, your first channel, and then your second channel, you want to make sure, you want to make sure your second channel is on gray click OK and we are going to go into our channels. Now Alpha 2 has been created for you. Click on Command A to make a selection, Command C to copy that. Now come into your layers panel, click to add a new layer, then press Command V to paste that. Now if you want a bit more of contrast, all you need to do is go under your adjustment and add a brightness and contrast. Now you can increase your contrast a little to give it that dramatic look. So that brings us to the end of tip number four. So the next tip that I want to share with you is how to put a border around your image. Now there are two ways to do that and both work very well. So we are going to demonstrate with the stroke effect. So I'm going to double click on my image and add a stroke effect. Now we want to click on stroke and once you click on that, click on the stroke and it will activate more options for you. We want to change the color and we're going to choose like a white. Now I'm just going to choose the default white. I'm going to click OK and we are going to go ahead and increase our stroke thickness. But notice that even though in the preview is showing it to me, I still don't see it. And the reason is that of the position of my stroke is on the outside. So obviously it's showing anything beyond the canvas and we don't want that. So you want to change the position to inside. Now when you change it to inside, you notice that you can now begin to see your border. Now you can go ahead and even increase it so you get it a little bit bigger or you can decrease it however you want. And I'm going to go ahead to click OK. So this is one option to use. Now, the other option is that once you bring in your image, 
typically any image that comes into Photoshop comes in locked. So click on your image without unlocking it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. So we only have our background. So you want to go to image and click on canvas size and a new window opens up for you. Now we want to change the dimensions to inches and we are going to increase the width to two height is going to be two. Now you notice that right beneath here, it gives you the option to change your color trim. Click on that and you can change it to whatever color that you want. So if I go for like a, a blue, since we already have, um, I, I'm going to do something like a cyan, I'm going to click OK. And or you can even choose some default, can be white, black or gray, but I'm going to leave it on this and click OK. So you notice that it gives you this option as well. So, so for the next tip, I want to show you how you can create a blur background. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to match both layers, first of all. So I'm going to hold on my shift, select the other image, right click and match it. So with this image as one, you want to go ahead and unlock your image. Now we are going to pick up our crop tool and we want to go ahead and increase and open up. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to make a duplicate of my image, command J, make a duplicate. Now I'm going to use my move tool. So with our image covering the entire canvas, I'm going to go under filter and then you want to go under blur, Gaussian blur. And this is where you have the option of blurring your background, whichever way you want. And then I'm going to click OK, just a little bit of a reveal. Now we are going to go ahead and move this layer on top and I'm going to use my move tool. I'm just going to scale this and I'm going to set that right in here like that. So the next tip I'm going to share with you is how to create an outline text, no matter the custom font that you're using. So we are going to pick our type tool and I'm going to click on my foreground and background to get the default. I'm going to click on my foreground and background, get the default, flip my arrow to get the white on top. So I'm going to click on my type tool and I'm going to just choose any random font and I'm just going to go ahead and type in and I'm just going to go ahead and increase this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy, command J, make a copy, pull this down. I'm going to double click and I'm going to move this up and I'm going to scale this a little bit more and set that right there. So to make the border and outline text, you want to click on your layer and then you want to reduce the fill to zero then click on your layer right click convert to a shape now you notice that it selects the outline for you so you want to click on your path selection tool and at the very top go to stroke change the stroke color to white and then you want to change the pixel to maybe three inches click ok you notice that you can see a preview of your outline. You can make it four pixel and then the outline, you can click on the stroke options and you can change the outline. It can either be on inside stroke, outside stroke. So we're just going to take that on the outside, come out of this and this is what you have. So for tip number eight, if you want to change the work area beyond your canvas area you can right click and then um, click on select custom color so let's say i choose i can choose a pink click ok and it changes that for me or you can just choose one of the default options it can be a black or it can be a dark gray it can be a medium gray or even a light gray but if you want to choose something other than these default colors you want to select um, custom color and then you have the option of changing it to whatever color you want we can even go ahead and do something like that color 
So for tip number nine, I want to show you how to increase and decrease your brush head. So let's say you want to erase a bit of your background. If you click on your eraser tool, you notice that you see the cursor, but you don't see the size of your eraser head. And that is because your cup locks is on. So once you turn off your cup locks, you can now see your eraser and you can go ahead and just erase. I'm going to press Command Z to go back. Now, what if you want to increase your brush head? You have to click on your left or your right bracket to either increase or decrease it. Or you can go ahead and erase. So Command D to go back. Now, it's the same thing with the brush tool. So for tip number 10, if you want to increase or decrease your hardness of your brush, or your eraser, all you need to do is hold down control options on your keyboard and then drag with your mouse up and down. So when you drag it up, it gives you a very low hardness. And if you drag your mouse down, it gives it a very hard hardness. So if I release this and I begin to erase, you see that it gives me harsh edges. But if I want a smooth edge, I have to make sure that with my control and option held down, I can move my mouse upwards and that will give me a very soft hardness. And you can see how this then looks. I hope that you like this. Please give this video a thumbs up, leave a like, a comment, and let me know which of these tips you found very helpful. So next time guys, please be safe and I will see you back. Bye y'all.